of the most tragic deaths in early Jujutsu Kaisen is that of Junpei Yoshino, a young man who found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time, bullied and rejected by society, and negatively influenced by a nasty curse spirit like Mahito. A latent talent to see curses was altered by idol transfiguration to become outright sorcery. Blessed now with Jujutsu, Junpei Yoshino, after the death of his mother, went on a complete rampage of the classmates who wronged him. Putting Junpei at odds with Itadori, someone he had come to consider a friend amongst all this chaos. Now a curse user, a Jujutsu High student like Yuji has no choice but to fight or turn Junpei back to the side of good. And just before that has any chance of occurring, the consequences of Junpei's actions take hold. Even after losing his mother and almost crawling himself out of the pit of darkness Mahito dragged him beneath, not even Yuji was able to save Junpei from the fate that was laid out before him. But what if he was? My members voted and asked me to create a brand new scenario in Jujutsu Kaisen, one in which Junpei actually lives. And Mappa no longer has to be hated for making us think he joined up with Jujutsu High with that first OP. In this video, not only will I switch things around to keep Junpei alive, I want to consider some of the big changes this would cause to Jujutsu Kaisen's story, as well as visualize what a fully realized and trained sorcerer Junpei might look like. Can he progress past Shikigami and actually unlock a real curse technique? And what does this mean for Yuji and Mahito's dynamic now that Junpei wasn't murdered? All things we'll be putting to the test in this video, sponsored by the beautiful and amazing Jogo Gang. If that sounds interesting to you, hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and most importantly, thank you for watching. Most importantly, we need to create a scenario in which Junpei does not get transfigured, which ultimately is pretty easy seeing as we only need to enter a timeline in which Junpei simply moves out of the way of Mahito's grasp after placing his trust in Yuji and turns to stand beside his friend, or Yuji, sensing the danger ahead of time, instead of freezing up, runs and punches the fuck out of Mahito on instinct. Honestly, something a Yuji of today in the manga would do, so it's not even too far out of his character. Now, at this point, Junpei is still broken down and beaten, barely able to combat, but he should at least be able to support Itadori and keep himself alive until Nanami shows up. With three sorcerers now up against an unawakened Mahito with no domain expansion at first, do things progress any differently? In my opinion, besides Junpei staying alive, much probably wouldn't change in the the overall finale of the versus Mahito arc. After physically getting the advantage over the disaster curse, with or without Junpei, Mahito's self-embodiment of perfection would probably awaken before exorcism. And no one at this point is reactive enough to catch his crafty ass from slipping down those sewers. Too new with his powers and exhausted after fighting Yuji, mentally broken after going full school and then coming back to the light side would take too much of a toll on Junpei for him to make a difference in this outcome. However, with time and training, there's still one more significant Mahito fight Junpei can change, but we're getting ahead of ourselves now. Completely traumatized and betrayed by the curse who took advantage of them, losing his mother and his entire normal teenage life because of his own foolish and selfish actions. Junpei would find himself amongst unknown Jujutsu High faculty, with his only lifeline being Itadori Yuji, a kid he's known for all of about 48 hours. So justifiably, I think Junpei would be a little too deep in emotional turmoil to even try and participate in the exchange event. This would give his character time to heal wounds both emotional and physical, while also allowing Yuji plenty of time to reconvene with the main cast without having to worry about Junpei. With Gojo's eagerness to adopt troubled children, I'm sure housing and enrollment in Jujutsu High would be no issue. Satoru even says himself back in Hidden Inventory, the demand for sorcerers is so high, they're not gonna fuss over a rocky resume. During this hiatus of Junpei's character from the main story, his development would mostly focus on his trust issues, not just with Mahito, 
who's still running loose, but even with the organization that just took him in. How can Junpei fully trust Jujutsu Society when they're planning on executing Itadori? And it's not like Gojo, the character who would most likely be spending the most time trying to rehabilitate Junpei, is gonna foster much trust in the Jujutsu higher-ups either. So with this neglect to truly trust anybody, let alone himself or the decision he makes, Junpei will truly have a hindrance on his abilities as a sorcerer. Nevertheless, having access to train with Gojo Satoru will do a young student like Junpei wonders in the area of understanding what he has available to him and his own fighting style. In the time span between the exchange event and the Shibuya incident, Junpei would not only grow in strength, but out of his trauma, would begin to foster an intense grudge against the cursed Mahito. That negative energy of revenge fueling his power and cursed energy reserves. On the flip side, Yuji, now glad that his friend Junpei is alive, and being able to train with Junpei and experience Jujutsu student life with him, doesn't really hold any more of hatred against Mahito than he would your average curse. Perhaps they share a personal relationship due to fighting before, and of course Yuji wouldn't like the whole plot to kill Junpei's mom thing, but other than that, the hatred definitely does not run as deep between these two as it did before. This will change how a lot of things go in the Shibuya incident and even further beyond, but before we get into all that, let's discuss how Junpei would develop as a sorcerer and theorize where he'd really sit on the power scale. At the start of his sorcerer journey, Junpei was given a small burst of cursed energy to his brainstem by Idol Transfiguration, which granted Junpei the ability to summon a Shikigami using his hair as an effigy. The familiar named Moondrag is a poisonous jellyfish Shikigami that even early on gave Junpei the power to fight somewhat on par with a new sorcerer like Yuji. The classmates Junpei attempted to massacre thought the teenager acquired psychic powers, since he was able to lift their full weight with Moondreg's tentacles and toss them with little effort. Any and all contact with Moondreg's skin would cause a poisonous reaction, as its entire body is surrounded in toxic fluid. Moondreg also has tendrils with spikes for offensive attacks and even faster lethal dosing. With even more refinement and cursed energy control, not only would Junpei find the core of his cursed energy and unlock the ability to reinforce his punches and kicks with power, this would increase both attack power and durability, meaning Moondreg could also vastly increase in size, its tendril span allowing for even greater range with its strikes. The Shikigami could also develop ways to spit projectile venom for a larger variety of ways to inflict poison on their enemies. However, in my opinion, the best development for Junpei and Moondrag would come from witnessing and watching recordings of Fushiguro Megami in the exchange event. Seeing the way Megami works with his Shikigami into close quarters battle and not being afraid to put himself in harm's way would really influence how Junpei uses Moondrag, creating a new combination technique between the two of them. Junpei will lie to you and tell you he didn't copy this form from a western movie he watched, but after Moondreg condenses all of its power into its tentacles and spike tendrils, its head would latch onto Junpei's back. Sticking firm, its tentacles would wrap around Junpei's shoulders and be able to extend over his arms and legs to create extra power if needed, creating a mobile armor that leaks and emanates poisonous liquid and fog while four and up to eight spiked tendrils protrude from the jelly-like head on Junpei's back, ready to independently strike and stab at opponents from any angle while Junpei fights his enemies head-on. After learning hand-to-hand -hand combat from both Satoru Gojo and Itadori Yuji, Junpei is more than confident to go up against curses and sorcerers alike in close quarters combat especially with Moondreg's armor and new gauntlets, making each attack he lands significantly more powerful in both physical and toxic means. Junpei's need to surpass Mahito not only manifests in this poison defense that naturally keeps the disaster curse's hands off of him, his lack of a curse technique causes him to create more packs with familiars. And keeping along with the poison trend, if Junpei was to gain any new Shikigami, I think two giant centipede Shikigami would be appropriate. Much larger and more ferocious than the weak ones we see Geto and Kenjaku curse manipulate, 
poison would seep from the centipede's scaly bodies as they quickly swam through the ground, creeping by, or if necessary, mildly quaking the earth below with power. These not only act as a great way to constrict opponents, they make great sneak attack opportunists with their ability to dig below ground. Although, for all their speed and stealth, they're not very durable. At least compared to Moondreg, who again, is basically a jelly-like substance. Although this is barely enough to make him any higher than a grade 2 sorcerer at best, Junpei's rapid recovery, along with the discovery of the happenings in Shibuya, would lead Junpei to sneak out of his room at Jujutsu High and wander into the depths of the Shibuya incident, having the surest of feelings for some reason he'll encounter his mother's killer at the source of this pandemonium. Junpei would easily slip into the chaos of the Shibuya incident with little to no problem, and in my opinion, the most accurate location for Junpei to wind up in would be with Nobura and Nita as they make their escape from Maki and now Bito Zenin. This would of course make the fight against Haruta Shigemo a 2v1 and give Nobura much more of a chance to take less damage before Grade 1 Nanami Kento comes. Paired with his new close quarters combat Moondreg combination, as well as the long range and additional hits the Centipede Shikigami allow for, the Miracle Cursed user would have his work cut out for him. Also considering Nobura's projectile nails are already Already hard enough to dodge. The auxiliary manager could probably escape this encounter, but talks unharmed, and the duo of Junpei and Nobura should be able to take Haruta down and exhaust his miracles. Be that through Nobura's resonance and hairpin strikes, or Junpei's toxic attacks through Moondrag or Centipede, even if Haruta's hand sword curse tool acts as a secondary opponent, one quick nail to the ground will keep the hand nice and snug and out of reach. Plus, invigorated by his revenge against Mahito and the newly acquired confidence after watching someone like Megami excel in combination with his own Shikigami, Junpei would be more than ready to take on a cursed user with merely luck on his side. The real fight doesn't begin until him and Nobura run into the Mahito doppelganger, split off from the main body after the sealing of Satoru Gojo. It's not surprising at all to think that Junpei, unlike Nobura, would want to go into the barrier again to save their friends. Even after being told they're too weak for the scenario, it just makes sense to me. Nobura's grit and loyalty with Junpei's need for revenge against Mahito. Bringing them together, it must be fate. The Mahito double would taunt Junpei in a devious manner, shapeshifting into his mother and pulling all types of diabolical tricks as ultimately, Mahito's goal is to lure Nobara and Junpei back to the main station fight between him and Yuji in order to continually torture Itadori's mental well-being. This would, one, make Mahito's job much easier, as Junpei being starved for vengeance makes him a cinch to manipulate, and Nobara would not be able to stand in the way of that grudge. This also makes way for, two, Nobara no longer unlocking the core of her cursed energy, as she isn't embarrassed by Haruta and showed up by Nanami, or pressed by the Mahito double, since Junpei took her character spotlight away. This not only makes it harder for Akutami to beat the misogyny allegations, it also makes it sadder to know Junpei is just dragging Nobara down to her death, as you're damn right I'm leaving that shit cannon and right there. Because I'm mean, it's gonna go down exactly like it did before. As Junpei chases the Mahito double down into the subway, when the two Mahito switch, Nobara is still the one that ends up catching the short end of the stick. Junpei gets out of the way and leaves her to still get clapped in the face, putting another awful death on both Junpei and now Yuji's hands. The double with no curse technique instead of immediately getting obliterated by Yuji, fights Junpei, while the real Mahito proceeds to torture Itadori over the death of his friend. With no idle transfiguration, just pure hands and slight shape-shifting, Junpei is pushed to the absolute brink and discovers the level he's at is nowhere near Mahito's, especially with all the evolving the Curse Spirit has done in these last couple of months. Junpei has barely scraped the surface Yuji was at when they first met at the school. While the real body black flashes and lectures Itadori about curses and humans, Junpei is on the precipice of death, bleeding out of every orifice and his centipede Shikigami and Moondreg completely torn to shreds. Junpei is disgusted with his inability to do anything himself 
even having to rely on Shikigami instead of his own flesh and blood power. As Junpei fades in and out of consciousness, he wonders why Mahito ever even made him a sorcerer in the first place. His whole life, he's been hated and bullied, but now, finally, Junpei's found friends to enjoy life with. And what was the cost? His mother. But Junpei had started to come to terms with that. This life is what she wanted for him. And yet, even in this life, those new friends are still dying, all at the hands of this one curse. Yuji protected Junpei back at the school, and Junpei Shikigami and Nobura protected him this whole time in Shibuya. And now that they're all gone, there's nothing Junpei can do but sit there and let Mahito kill him. Junpei's always tried his best to hide and stay out of the spotlight. Perhaps this never was his story to begin with. Maybe he never should have even been here in the first place. And it would be much easier to just fade away into the background forever. An image of his mother would flash into Junpei's mind. And suddenly, the last blockage, keeping Junpei's full sorcerer potential from reaching his brainstem, unlocks. Cursed energy flowing freely and truly grasping his core. Junpei reaches into the depths of what he truly is and wants to be. Junpei's always done his best at hiding, but perhaps he can use this to his advantage. Junpei had been tortured his whole life by smoke, constantly clouding his judgment and vision of the right path. No longer. Now, Junpei controls the smoke. Before losing the last bit of his life, Junpei takes hold of his newfound self and suddenly erupts in a cloud of smoke. As the Mahito double made a move for its killing blow, its hand begins to singe and disintegrate as it makes contact with the smoke, causing Mahito to jump back in defense. Junpei emerges from the cloud of heat as it begins to form tendrils and make the shape of an octopus behind him, the smoke taking form almost. Junpei Yoshino's curse technique is unlocked. Having been bullied by cigarettes his whole life to the point of being scarred forever, ironically enough, this smoke would now become his weapon. Able to drastically increase the heat of his smoke, use it to hide his movements or allies, as well as convert his body into smoke and take damage or critical hits much easier. The versatility in a curse technique like this is quite large. However, we won't explore this too much for now as Junpei still has plenty of development to go for his character and must work towards finding a completely new sense of self once Mahito is gone and his need for vengeance is quenched. For now though, this new power will be enough to completely disorient the Mahito clone and give Junpei the upper hand in battle, especially against a weakened Mahito double with no idle transfiguration. In Junpei's heightened stat slash awakened state, he should be able to manage that at the very least. And with Toto arriving to help Itadori out, Mahito is going to need to call that power back to himself anyway. This new resolve and self-confidence in Junpei would allow him to understand the gap between him and Mahito. Now comfortable with his place in the world and realizing Junpei isn't the one to kill the disaster curse, he would opt to stay with Nita and the dead question mark, Nobara, while the also newly reinvigorated Yuji Itadori and a fresh Aoi Toto go off to set the timeline back into place. After being healed by Nita and happy that his mom's soul can rest in peace with the death of Mahito, Junpei's character would now revolve around what he plans to do next. An average teenager converted into a sorcerer against his will in a moment of weakness by a curse that no longer exists does Junpei return to his normal life, or does he play the new coming death battle royale known as the Culling Game, fighting alongside his newfound friends? Owing Yuji a debt of gratitude, as well as Satoru Gojo and Megami, with plenty more to potentially learn in regards to his curse technique, Smoke Manipulation. The Culling Game is the perfect opportunity for Junpei to pay back that debt, as well as explore the depths of his new sorcerer powers. If that sounds like an interesting addition to this all new Junpei timeline, let me know in the comments down below and I'll cover it, because unfortunately, that's all there's gonna be for this one. Thank you again for all of my members voting on this and letting me explore this awesome idea. If you haven't already, please hit me with the like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Feel free to hit an end screen video to continue your binge and I'll see you guys in the next one.
Peace.